and welcome to another episode of The Winding Stairs. I am your host, Juan Sepulveda, and today I have a treat. Brothers, today I'm accompanied by three awesome brothers from Orange Lodge number 36 in Apopka, Florida. And these guys were so generous to include me last minute in their trip to Tennessee. Today, we're going to talk about the infamous or famous cave degree. I'm super excited to get into it, and I'm very happy that these brothers have agreed to spend some time with me tonight talking about it, um, as if they didn't get enough of me for the past <laughs> four or five days. Uh, going clockwise here, I'm going to introduce each one of you. If you can please say hello. We have Rolando Vargas. Hey, how you guys doing? We have Justin Hayes. Hello. And Patrick Tessier. Hello, and thank you for having us aboard. I'm so excited to have you, brothers. Um, this is an experience that I was waiting for for a long time. I didn't think that it was going to be happening anytime soon, considering the fact that it's in another state, considering the fact that it's a multiple-day affair. And serendipitously, things lined up in a certain way that made it possible for us to have this experience. Now, for those who may not know what the cave degree is, we're going to go and give you a little behind, uh, a little background, a little background. There's a there's a reference there that I have to share with you later on in private. Uh, a little background about the the cave degree. What is it? Uh, if if any of you brothers feels comfortable enough uh, to just give us a a synopsis about what is this cave degree that we've been hearing so much about over the past couple of weeks. Rolando and I went last year. It was our first year. Um, we were supposed to go in 2020, but it was canceled, of course, because of the pandemic. We had no idea what to expect. It's a Master Mason degree in a cave. That's basically it. So your imagination can really run wild with this. Um, that being said, it was better than we even imagined. Um, when you fit 300 to 400 men in a cave, and have a master mason degree it's impactful it really really is so we went last year it was just rolando and i from our lodge um, florida had the largest representation of masons um, at the cave degree and we seem to have it just about every year but uh, we were blessed this year to have justin and, and brother juan come with us that, that was really cool that that you guys had us uh come with you we we were the rookies and the, and the two of you were the veterans yep <laughs> Uh, Justin, for you, you, you're a relatively new Mason. Mm -hmm. uh, how soon after you became a master Mason did you hear about the cave degree? Um, well, I actually probably heard about it um, while I was still going through, I think, my EA before nice. I gave back my EA. Um, and I knew I wanted to go to it because it sounded really interesting, but I just didn't hit that the time didn't work out. So I didn't get raised until after that first year that they went. Um, but when they told me this time that it came around, I was like, I'm, I have to go to it because I've been hearing about it for so long. I have to make a plan to go to it. So That's it's cool. been a long time coming. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I'm glad we, we had the opportunity. And Rolando, like for you, when you first started walking, like that first time that you went with, with Patrick and you started walking in the direction of the cave, uh, like, can you describe that, that experience? Like, how was it approaching this uh, mythical <laughs> Masonic cave? So it's funny that you say that because I took a different approach. Uh, some of you may know uh, that I am a uh, volunteer in scouting. So when they say you have to hike, I was already like, you know, I, I was like a kid in a candy store. I'm like, yes, I'm going <laughs> to hike. I love it. So Patrick can attest, and you guys can attest like, to this as well. I had my hiking book bag, and I had my uh, my hiking sticks, and I also have provisions because we were told that we were going to be there for a very long time. And there was a, a specific year that uh, is necessary for you to take. And so you so you can enjoy uh, the degree a lot more. And uh, so I was I was giddy. I was like, oh man, this is gonna be excellent. Um, I, I I even took my hiking shoes with me 
So I'm which, a which lover were needed. Of, yes, they were. Uh, I'm a lover of nature. So as soon as I walked up to the entrance, I I, I felt at home. I felt this is this is this is for me. This is this is. It felt like home. It felt like something. You know, I I I driven so many miles and so many hours from my current home uh, all the way to Tennessee. And when I got on the trail, I was like, yep, I'm home. This is it. This is this is the reason why I came. Uh, I was very happy. So it was very intriguing. And once I got to the top and we saw the opening to the cave, uh, if, if you don't take the time to consume a new point of view mm-hmm. and, and, and just stare at the possibilities. Because at that time, I didn't know anything. So mm-hmm. I was very intrigued and very excited at the same time. And then the very first question that came to my mind was, so where are the bathrooms again? <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> As a scout, I'm like thinking, all right, so this is the way we go to the cave. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> but other than that, it was, uh, I don't wanna, uh, you know, spill all the beans right now, but uh, you have several questions we need to answer. So you know, you... No, and, that, and that's good. I like the fact that here, two things that you're passionate about yeah. coincided so perfectly, right? It, it's yeah. it's almost for you, yeah, hiking and spending time out in nature and like pushing your pushing your body to through some of these difficult challenges like climbing up that steep hill and climbing through that through the cave uh so to to give people a, a picture of of the what the cave degree is 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 about it is the actual the conferral of a master mason degree it, deep inside of a natural cave the cave that we're talking about is uh Evelyn's Cave. This is in the property of Clayton Brashear Farms in Tennessee. And it is private property, but for 51 years, they have put it at the disposal of Union Lodge number 38 in Kingston, Tennessee. So you mentioned uh, earlier that they started this as a, an initiative to get more interest in masonry. And it would have started local, right? They would have been the local... Uh, I would imagine the district would hear about it and and start the word start spreading. But look at it now. Uh, Patrick, what was the the if you can remember the count of of brothers that were there for this event? Yeah. So this year there were 310 brothers in the cave um, representing 18 states and 104 different lodges across those states. Wow. And that was less than last year because last year was the 50th anniversary. There were 440 Masons inside that cave. Wow. wow. Yeah. So that was, that was a tight, that was a, a tight fitting, but it's a, it's a giant cave. I mean, it's very, very spacious. Uh, but the area in which they confer the degrees is, is a little bit narrow and it has some spill, uh, spillover rooms that you can still have a line of sight to the to the altar and the east and all and, and the g and, and everything uh but you will be you know a little bit of ways but acoustics <laughs> oh my god yeah. to hear to hear 310 men say the pledge of allegiance right? with those acoustics goosebumps literal literal yeah. goosebumps yep. you're saying it now i'm getting goosebumps it's like mm-hmm. that i i told my wife about that it's like that the resounding that sound that that bouncing through and through and all these men saying it at the same time and you're looking at old glory being paraded here by the light of of these little gleaming uh mm-hmm. light bulbs and it's just it's amazing it's definitely an experience to to behold so i, I i'll go out on a limb and say that union lodge really knocked it out of the park it, it this grew out to be something even greater than I that they would have imagined at that time. I'd be curious to see the the numbers. I'd be curious to see how many brothers came on the to the first and then to the second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See how it grew. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
But yeah. yeah, I don't know if you remember Patrick, but from what I understand, even last year that it was a little bit bigger than this year, that was still not the world record or the yeah, record of amount of Masons attended that K degree. I, uh, I don't recall. I, I spoke with the past grandmaster who who does um from that uh, from from Tennessee and he's the one who puts this on every year and picks mm -hmm. the degree teams that are going to do this and he said the biggest number that they ever had in the cave was somewhere around a little over 500 wow crazy yeah. guys climbing mm -hmm. on rocks you know just to get a good vantage point and mm -hmm. yeah standing room only that's, oh, I believe that's it. impressive i think i may be able to find the actual number here in a bit uh but the in addition to the the fact that this is a remote location, that it's it's a private property, that it's it's pretty much in pristine condition, other than the fact that there is a string of lights to facilitate uh, the movement in there. Because how dark is it in there when there is no none of those lights? <laughs> Well, you, you remember coming with us to set up the chairs first thing in the morning. You had that nice layer of fog right there at the entrance of the cave, made it look really, really ominous and pitch black. <laughs> yeah, we actually um, traditionally uh, or the smart move here is that you don't wait until the day of the degree to go and set up your your chairs. So when we arrived did we visit we visited the first time was on on friday friday morning mm -hmm. so we went out there we looked at the place we actually had enough time and liberty to explore all the little uh areas of it and we got that was our first encounter with the temperature that showed <laughs> us okay this is you better come prepared <laughs> if you're gonna spend a couple of hours here uh, going through a degree and not just the degree is all the pomp and circumstance that comes with it. There's the opening of the lodge, the closing of the lodge, the introduction of the dignitaries. We had, uh, we had some gold and purple in that, in that cave. So, um, but we had a chance to set up uh, the day before we actually went, spent some time. And we, of course, got a chance to say, okay, everybody lights out. Let's see how this feels. And when all of those flashlights turned off, not a hint of light anywhere. And the only what? thing you heard was the dripping of the water. Oh, the coming dripping from the of rhythm, coming yeah. from the top of the cave. <laughs> yep. uh, uh, Justin, uh, go ahead, Rolando. If you give us, can you give us a little insight into what the dripping of the water meant when you guys went the first time? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's actually a, a, a pretty good story, but. Uh, we forgot to mention something about the cave degree. So we go all the way to Tennessee for a third degree, master mason degree. Uh, but the one thing that uh, we forgot to mention that the degree is being held by visiting states. So uh, Tennessee is not performing the master mason degree nor any other degree during that weekend. So the way it works is that um, they invite several other states that are eligible to travel and at the same time perform uh, with proficiency uh, a master mason degree. And the advantage to all of this, there's, there's so many advantages and I, right? I hope that you guys can mention more than what I can, but you know, uh, number one, you get to see um, rituals from different states. And I think that Everybody has their differences and similarities, and that by itself, it's an experience uh, that that a, a true master mason will enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, and and, I'm, and that's the only thing I want to mention about that. Um, I'm sure that Patrick and, and uh, Justin and, and yourself can elaborate. Um, but the experience, going, going back to the topic at hand, the experience of the dripping of the water. So um, first time that we arrived, Patrick and I were told, hey, pick up a good spot and make sure that you don't get dripped on. Throughout the entire cave, 
there's constant dripping of water. And so it's not warm water, is it? <laughs> no, no, it's, I, I think I, you know what, not for nothing, but I believe that if you look at the origins of the ice bucket water, uh, what is it, the, the ice <laughs> challenge was originated at that cave. In that cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so we were told, hey, go early in the morning, place your chairs in a location where you may be able to uh, either uh, deviate from the water being dripped on you, or at the same time, uh, if you're going to get uh, any type of water dripping on you, that is very limited. So we did just that. And uh, you want to take it from there, Patrick? I, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, so, so, it's so, funny. <laughs> so last year, we placed our chairs in a position that was a little bit further away from the, the, uh, the north marching line, a little bit further towards the back of the cave. And uh, one of our right worshipfuls who came from Florida said, you know, can we go ahead and swap spots? So where we were positioned this year is where Rolando and I were last year. Oh, um, so they wanted to switch spots with us because he had to leave early. And of course, after the fact, he came up to you and he goes, yeah, you guys suck. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, the position you sat in, you originally sat in that they went to constant drip. They were soaked. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. soaked. So, but the cool part about where Rolando and I were last year is the mountain men of Mississippi conferred the degree last year and they were in full yeah. 1800 mountain men guard while they conferred oh, wow. it. And oh. Rolando and I got to be part of the canvas crew nice. because, because of where we were sitting. Nice. Can, are, are we allowed to describe the canvas? Thing, that, no, 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 that's okay. that's as far as we are. I appreciate the, I appreciate the, the question, though. <laughs> yes, sir. No, I want to make sure. I no, that's it. Sure. that's it. That's it. That's no, it. But one one good thing that at least every grandmaster who comes from the state that's conferring the degree, like the grandmaster of Mississippi, was there last year. The grandmaster of uh, Delaware was there this year. He said, and if you know anything about masonry and hats, you know, he said everybody can wear a hat because that constant drip will a hat will protect you. So that was yeah. pretty cool. We had some there were there was a brother sitting right across from us on the on the north side of the lodge. And he had a hat and he had like one of these rain gear kind of jackets on. Mm -hmm. So you could tell he's a veteran like he's mm -hmm. been in there. He knew <laughs> he knew the play by play. Uh, Justin, I want to hear from you about uh -huh. the the differences. Uh, I know that you in in our district and here in florida you had visited different lodges but was this your first experience sitting um actually no you have mentioned that you had gone to georgia to a lodge uh can you can you share that experience of how how does it feel to actually sit in lodge and see ritual opening all the all the ceremony from a completely different state um the only way i can think of describing it is kind of like culture shock it's kind of like visiting another country almost mm -hmm. like when you see someone's ritual from a different state uh that is very it's very alien sometimes the the different parts that they have the different lines that they have and some sometimes even in the opening that we saw uh the tyler which in our ritual almost has no lines at all had lines in their opening which is very unique so that's just one example but there's tons and tons of examples of um of completely different rules and ritual that they do at different states and we got the pleasure of, of seeing two different ones new jersey and um delaware delaware hey, that's a great point uh, we didn't mention the fact that when just to give people a, a broad idea of how our trip was and and I want to share this not just because I want you to know oh here's what I did you know oh wonderful that they got to do this I want you to also think about the possibility of you engaging in these kinds of traveling like here mm -hmm. in our district we talk a lot about the importance of traveling uh, the Masonic travel is not just so that you can uh, go and meet other people is so that you can go and perhaps see masonry from a different point of view so that you can consider some additional um profundities of the degree that just by the way that people say things in a different state it makes you think differently about this degree that you've become familiar with over the years but now it's shown to you in a brand new light mm -hmm. so i wanted to go over it real quick because i want you to think of how possible it is because i'm sure that some brothers that are listening or watching uh to this episode they may think yeah but 
it, it, I can't just go out and spend three days traveling. And then what am I going to do about this? I'm going to, I'm going to share some things that will make you consider, oh, you know what? This is not as impossible as it may seem at first, uh, first glance. And the first one is the fact that the sharing of the experience and the sharing of the expenses. Uh, in, in this trip, Patrick was, uh, as I described it often, he was our captain. He, he, he was the one that was driving. He was the one that had uh, a, a layout of the plan of what we were going to do uh, throughout the days. He was very flexible and very accommodating whenever we wanted to go do something. He was very accommodating, but he had a, the lay of the land initially, and that was very, very helpful. But the sharing of the expenses, we we ate, we had uh, libations, <laughs> we um, we went on excursions, all that kind of stuff. But it was of minimal impact because it wasn't just one person carrying all the burden. It's like everybody pulled their own weight, and it I think it flowed uh, very naturally. So the first day. Um, I'm in central Florida, but I am at least an hour and 10, 20 minutes from, from where they uh, are gathering. So I decided to take a train, which was, it's completely foreign. If you if you live in Florida, if you've ever been to Florida and you say, I took a train, people look at, they're going to look at you like you have a, a third eye or a fourth <laughs> eye. <laughs> so I took a train to meet them up further north in uh, Altamont Springs. And that made sense. They picked me up from there and then we drove up to, to Tennessee. The fact that we had added an additional day, we had that Thursday travel day, it gave us enough flexibility that if we wanted to stop and take a look at a lodge, if we wanted to go in to the most uh, worshipful gas station of Bucky's, <laughs> uh, we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> to get some fudge yep. or, or or nuts. Pop rocks and chocolate milk. Uh -huh. Pop rocks, chocolate milk. Don't right. forget. <laughs> it's the breakfast of champions. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. So, and, and we did that. Now, who is the most excited about what we got to do in Georgia? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it was, it was surreal. Some of the stuff that we were able to witness. Yep. It was pretty, pretty amazing. Very unexpected. Right? Mm -hmm. That okay. tour was something else. Mm -hmm. Well, so in Georgia, what we did was that we decided to drive by Macon, where the Grand Lodge of Georgia is. And we had no expectations other than we're going to look at this building from the outside, take a couple of pictures, and go on our merry way. Patrick, how was that expectation uh, short of what actually happened. Oh my God. So normally <laughs> I travel about, I, I feel like 200 lodges in the state and I take pictures outside and all that good stuff. And I expected the exact same thing from the Grand Lodge of Georgia, but we got there and the minute we turned the corner and parked, I saw somebody walk into the door and I'm like, Oh, somebody's here. <laughs> so we were able to knock on the door and no, no other than the grand secretary of the Grand Lodge of Georgia gave us an in-depth tour of that building and the history. It, it was absolutely surreal. How amazing. If you're enjoying this episode, you will love our newly redesigned website, thewindingstairs.com, where you will find free access to our entire podcast catalog. By visiting thewindingstairs.com, you will also discover our growing collection of Freemasonry-inspired art. That's right. Bring elegant artwork featuring the profound symbols of masonry to your home, office, or lodge. You'll be happy to know that we've also expanded our apparel collection to include new, discreet designs in sizes up to 5XL. We can't wait for you to see them. Support our efforts to share Masonic education and inspiration by visiting thewindingstairs.com today. Thank you. Now, what stands out the most about the things that we saw there, Rolando? Inside. Oh. Uh -huh. The exterior of the building and, and the architecture. Uh, that building, uh, it's, 
whether it is the best way that I can describe, but it was time correct, uh, time period correct, if you will, uh, for the age that it was erected. And it, it was very surreal. And then at the same time, I know that you asked me about the building, but what I took from that particular experience was the hospitality. Mm. Uh, number one, we were received as brothers and no questions was asked. It was, you're, you're my brother and that's it. Mm -hmm. So that by itself shows the fellowship that uh, we strive to have no matter where you land, as long as, you know, you, you are uh, in a gathering with brothers. Uh, but the building itself from uh, the, the, the lodge upstairs, the spiral art deco uh, staircases. Yes. And, uh, Did you mean to say the winding stairs? Ooh, with the, the secret door. Stairs, that's right. <laughs> the secret door and, and the vault. I'm not going to say much about the vaults, but the vaults. <laughs> okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, that, it was it was a great experience. And but overall, the the number one experience that I'm taking from that particular uh, part of our trip was the hospitality of a brother. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. Brother Mac. That's right. Yeah, he he was he was so good. Uh, what stand what stands out for you from from the the things that that he was able to share with us, uh, Justin? Um, well, I mean the history of the building, uh, one thing, and also that it was a the the actual lodge room itself was the York uh, York right right mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty interesting for me, never being in a York right building ever. Uh, it's pretty interesting to see that just alone. But the but the the tour uh, concluded with gifts from him, not no asking, no nothing. He just no. had he had to give us uh, the Grand Lodge coins, and um, even me and Patrick were both Eagle Scouts, and he gave us stuff for for Eagle Scouts that they give to to Georgia Masons. So it was just incredible, and not not uh, not requested, not anything. He jumped right into. Um, just excitement about showing us around and it was yeah. it was fantastic that's cool you know earlier that day we we were talking about an experience that i had with my my brother victor um which if you listen to uh there's an episode that i did with him here on the winding stairs that talks about no stones unturned and it was on a trip that we took to georgia coincidentally where we made a decision early on that if we had any questions, we were going to try to find the answers that we weren't just going to ignore things as we drove by them. If something caught our eye, we wanted to learn a little bit more about it. We were just going to go in there and check it out. And, and these brothers in this trip, they have the same attitude. So we're not going to just, okay, well, we saw someone walk into this building. Uh, let's see who they are. <laughs> you know, if it's a maintenance person and they kick us out, okay, they kick us out. <laughs> But if it's a brother or someone that can just show us around a little bit, then perfect. Well, we were lucky that it was a ladder and they actually were very, very generous with their time and with the access that they gave us to look at different things. It was almost like when you like show, it kind of reminded me of show and tell. It's like, you're super excited to share with other people what really means a lot to you. And then you're able to show show people and he was very excited about showing us uh the rooms and showing us the the seal of this of the yep, grand lodge that's what i was just about to say yep that I thing mean, was th incredible there's a great the great story with that right was that during, during the civil war so we looked at this thing and this thing is all of like 18 to 20 inches tall like just a big old seal and caught Juan's eye immediately and I, me right afterwards and he goes oh yeah he goes we've had that you know for for hundreds years hundreds of years and I'm like, he's like, but during the Civil War, we had to hide it. I'm like, hide it? What happened? He goes, yeah, we hid it in a pig pen. 
they actually hid the seal in a pig pen in the bottom of a pig pen and then were able to recover it after the civil war so that was uh that, that was a great story and i think we probably each got about 50 pictures of the thing oh my god but but to the no stone left unturned while we were there he said hey if you just go right behind the lodge a couple of streets here there's yep. a cemetery and you need to go into that cemetery and see some of the 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 headstones and gravestones and monuments that are erected to masons in there and boy were we not disappointed with that trip oh, yes. yes something that we would have never known had he uh, not suggested that we go see it yeah yeah because when you look at the you look at that grand lodge building now the city has grown around it and it it, it just just it, like any other like any other city. So there's all kinds of stores and all kinds of different things. So we would not have gone in the, even in the direction of where the cemetery was. So we're very mm -hmm. lucky about that. Now, um, for the brothers that are, that have heard about the cave degree and they've heard about these different events, like for example, here in Kissimmee, we have the Island degree that is coming up in November. Uh, in New Jersey, or I can't remember if it was New Jersey or Delaware, the railroad track. That's uh, Delaware. Delaware. In Delaware. So these are once in a lifetime experiences that every Mason should pilgrimage to go experience them. Being able to go through a degree in a railroad um, tunnel, right? Yeah. Rolando, does any other come to mind or? Uh, yeah, there are several uh, different degrees as well, uh, well, at least on our side, and you mentioned a couple of them already, um, but they also have the, well, there's two of them. There's a, uh, is it a Navy ship degree? USS and New then, Jersey. Yeah, there you go. And then there's the waterfall degree as well in Georgia. Mm, yep. So uh, there's different events that create opportunities for brothers that don't have the opportunity to go to the cave degree they should go to other degrees that may be in their purview instead yeah, good uh, point. you should not be disappointed and you should not feel worried or or afraid to travel because when you travel with brothers wherever you end up at that is the safest spot that you can be because mm -hmm. you're among brothers and that's all you need to know i love that i love that and it doesn't have to be like you travel all the way up to washington dc to see the the house of the temple you know if you are within driving distance of kissimmee which any part of the state pretty much is within four to five hours i mean sorry key west you got to drive a little <laughs> <bit>. <laughs> but pretty much every uh landlocked area <laughs> here in in florida uh you have access to come to kissimmee and the island degree is one of these um i don't know what to call them i think of novelty degrees mm. but I, I really don't know what to call them if you think of any just an outdoor degree. Most of these are just right. all, all the degrees that are not in lodges are just considered outdoor degrees. Like okay. Fort, Fort right. Clinch is another one. Um, yes. Yeah, the, 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 there's plenty all over the state. A week after the cave degree, there's a rock quarry degree in Georgia. Mm -hmm. We just didn't have the time to go there. Yeah, that, right. that, that, that all, those all sound good. Uh, but the island degree that we do here in November, uh, it's I think it's the first week of November. And there is an island in the middle of a lake. In, in the middle of Lake Tahoe, uh, here in, in Kissimmee. I'm not going to try to pronounce the name of the lake, <laughs> the full name, but it's uh, that property is, is we get permission to use it on its entirety. So the whole island is used uh, by Orange Blossom Lodge, number 80, to confer a Master Mason degree. And brothers from diff from all the, from our jurisdiction, they all come in, work together, and and do the master mason degree. I've been to it at least once. Um, yeah, I, I missed the first the first year. I missed it. I went on the second, and then on the third, uh, I uh, I couldn't go. And I think that one was canceled because of uh, it wasn't canceled. It was done in the lodge. It wasn't mm. done in the in the island. That was probably the one that we were talking about. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. 
but they closed the island just for us. And we ferry people from the shore all the way to the island, take multiple, there's multiple boats going back and forth, taking people into the island. And it's impressive. So mm -hmm. if you guys are within driving distance of Kissimmee, put it in your calendar. I'll share. If you follow me on social media, I'm going to give more specific details about uh, the dates and times for, for you to sign up for it. But the point is that I would like for you to consider the idea of travel, not just traveling within your district and just from one lodge to another. Also consider traveling as that opportunity to, to have a once in a lifetime opportunity to witness an outdoor degree, or perhaps go to a grand lodge and get to see the facilities, perhaps schedule a visit so that you can see more in depth uh, access to, to it. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to, to mention is that on Friday night, there was a fellow craft degree conferred in Union Lodge number 38, which is in Kingston, Tennessee. Uh, who was it that, uh, that put that one together? New, New Jersey, Jersey. Mm -hmm. New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And what, what, Justin, what did you think of that, of the, of, of the, the, the work that they that New Jersey brought to, to Tennessee that night. Mm, it was fantastic. It was, it was a lot, it was very unique compared to what I'd seen. Even I'd only seen other than that night, I'd seen Georgia ritual one time and everything else was Florida ritual. So it's pretty interesting to see uh, a Northern state uh, do their degree, which is a lot different. And uh, some of the different aspects that they have to their opening and closing and they put on a pretty great degree. It was it was very entertaining to watch. All the differences were, were especially interesting to pay attention to. Rolando, you mentioned to me at one point the the fact that the senior deacon was so eloquent and he was so precise with the delivery. What what else can you tell us about what they did that night? So um without elaborating, there were more players uh, than usual than mm -hmm. that we're accustomed to see in our launch in Central Florida. Um, the delivery of their ritual was on point, and just you know. So <laughs> here's here's another thing. Um, I, and it's it's difficult to explain. I but. know. I, I was gonna say it's a little <laughs> tricky because yeah, of course this is a it's a public thing that we're doing, so we have right. to be a little bit cryptic, which is even yeah. more reason for the people listening to travel, so that we can have these conversations and freely tell you, bro, this is what I saw, and you know, yes. yeah. Uh, so, so we're holding we're holding a little bit back, but you know, if you come yes. and hang out with us, you, you'll hear the the full story. <laughs> so can I say anything about the candidate by any chance? About the about who who it was? Yes. Yeah, I think that's fine. So the candidate during this degree, uh, uh apparently I don't understand I, we don't know the 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 facts that happen. Uh typically when they have these type of rituals or degree, they're uh having the ritual or the degree work for that specific brother. Mm -hmm. uh, this time around, we don't know the details. We don't know what happened, but apparently the brother couldn't make it or was not there. So uh, we had a substitute. Let's just say that uh -huh. we had a substitute. And regardless who that person was, who the substitute was, regardless who it was, it doesn't matter the team delivered the ritual the way that it was supposed to mm -hmm. as per their uh, Grand Lodge uh, digest in their state. And that shows you that it, it doesn't matter what situation a brother is in. Uh, once a brother, always a brother, and you're going to help them out. And at that particular situation, we understood that uh, there, there was there, there was someone specific missing and we were able to pick it up. 
Yeah. And, and, and that's all that matters. You know, we're, we're there to help each other out. You see, it, it kind of, it made me think of, it made me think of the Scottish Rite because sometimes in the Scottish Rite reunions, there are so many candidates that not all of them can participate physically in, in the degree. So they are benefiting from witnessing the degree, but it's somebody else that's going through it, right? Mm -hmm. But typically is someone that's never gone through it. This was a very special situation because that brother was tickled pink because he's going through a degree that he already received mm -hmm. and he's going through it being conferred by a completely different state mm -hmm. that yeah. brought their A game. Is they mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes I think about that, for example, like there are moments where I think of like the red lodges. Um, my my I, I almost revealed something I wasn't supposed to reveal. <laughs> uh, I am very close to people who live in that are Masons in Puerto Rico, in Central and South America, and their ritual is different than ours. And I sometimes think, how awesome would it be if they allowed me to be a part of the ritual? I already have that degree. I just want that experience mm -hmm. and, and just to to see to witness that for the first time. And this brother, he got that chance. Yeah. That's that's very rare. It's, so that's funny that you mentioned that because I don't know. Looking at both sides, receiving it versus witnessing it which one you prefer to do, right? And, it, and, and, and I guess it depends uh, who's delivering it. You know, like, um, I'll tell you this much. Uh, I, I, I've been talking to Patrick and, and one of the things that I wouldn't mind doing in the future or if I get the opportunity to do is to do the same, uh, to witness a ritual or a degree work from um, uh, either Hawaii or uh um uh, the other pacific islands that are out there just so i can see uh what the ritual looks like mm. yeah that i think that'll be that'll be great i mean mm. patrick have you um you've only received the degrees once right but you've witnessed the degrees multiple times by multiple different degree teams the degree team makes it or breaks it right? absolutely <laughs> there's there's no question about that these guys who come to the cave from these things i mean i, I like to liken it to like a sports team they bring the ringers <laughs> right they're generally not now uh uh ionic lodge number 31 who opened the master mason the cave degree they use their installed officers to open that degree OK, that's not the way it goes. The 16th district has conferred two master mason degrees in the cave and an EA degree in the lodge. And we sent the best of the best of the best to ensure that the, the other jurisdictions that came there saw Florida ritual the way it was meant to be performed. And the candidate got the absolute best experience. So the degree team does make it. Mm -hmm. That's that, that's exciting. I mean, getting to. Um, there's a. I don't know how to how to how to describe it, but it's like you you still can, as you witness a degree, you can be in a state of mind that almost feels as if you were going through it yourself. And and I talk to brothers and I encourage them to try to try to search for that feeling, especially in a lodge. Let's say for example, there's a lodge that doesn't have a lot of Masonic education, or just does five minutes of Masonic education or just reads from the digest just to check the box, right? You are not completely cheated out of an experience in a lodge like that. If you at least listen carefully and internalize the words of the prayer and listen carefully and internalize the meaning and, and the purpose of the steps that happen through the opening of the lodge. If you're lucky enough to have a lodge that actually does the opening charge or the closing charge, right? That is, that really makes an impact on the individual, but you have to be in the right state of mind to go through it and accept it.
And I've noticed that if I, we have brothers that they want to leave at a certain time. And whenever someone starts giving the charge, you can see that they roll their eyes like, oh my God, now we got to listen to this whole thing. Just, you know, when is, when does the bell ring? I just want to get out of here. Right. They're cheating this. You're cheating themselves. They're cheating their own selves out of having that experience of, of soaking in the experience and, and that, um, the, the, that esoteric, that essence that's within those words. So, uh, brothers, I, I see that we, we're approaching the, the hour mark and I want to be respectful of your time. I'm excited to hear, uh, I was excited to hear your perspectives. Of course, I lived through this with you and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm the better for it. I'm very thankful that you guys were so, um, so accommodating you, uh, got me in the car and, you know, you gave me an amazing experience. This is something that I'm going to treasure for, for the rest of my life and look forward to doing something like it again. Next year. Uh, next next year. year. It's in the calendar. Okay. Yep. Now, yep. now Juan, if I may, just before we leave, please, I'd, like please. To, I'd like to say one thing. Yes, sir? I don't, I don't want the brothers out there listening to think that, okay, we traveled 700 miles just to see a master Mason degree and we came back down. Okay, that that was not the reality of it. So no. we can talk about all the fellowship we had in the car, the great conversations, the bonding between the four of us in the car. But you get there Friday, you go sign in the lodge for the for the for the cave degree. You have breakfast in the lodge. You have access to men you've never had access to before. Right. Most guys don't even know who their grandmaster is, let alone talking to them openly. But that Friday night, we have a, an either an EA or fellow craft degree in the lodge. After that. I don't know how much we want to get into this, but Let's we do. all went back to the hotel, right? There were about 50 of us that took over the parking lot of the hotel. You had young guys, old guys, TikTok guys, guys who don't even know what a cell phone is, all just enjoying great fellowship together, really enjoying. I mean, yep. I think we closed that down at like 2 a.m. And true. then then the morning after, there's a breakfast and a lunch at the lodge, and you go through the cave degree and then more fellowship afterwards at the end. So it's not just a go up, come back down for one experience. It is a whole weekend's worth of experiences. It makes it that much more worthwhile to travel that kind of distance. And uh, uh, another thing I want to say is that uh, is the cave degree just for the men? Oh no! Great question. Yeah, great question. Um, if you no, it is not. Uh, of course, before people get their aprons in a bunch, uh, yeah, the degree itself is just for the for the masons. This for the is brothers, a, yeah. yeah, this is a regular lodge that's putting this together, but the trip is for the family. We had yeah. brothers there that traveled with their wife, that traveled with their, uh, I don't remember seeing a lot of children, but. No, you know, I'm sure like, there was, but. Yeah. Um, but you had the husbands and the wife that traveled up to Tennessee together. They're, they're lodging together. They're going to dinners together. They're hanging out all together. So when we were in the parking lot, there were a lot of ladies that were there with their husbands and they're, having a blast uh, by themselves. You, you had a couple of clicks. I did notice that you had people that knew each other from, from before. So they were hanging together. Uh, an interesting dynamic, like Patrick just mentioned, we had the, the TikTokers on, a, on, on another corner. How, how many would you say? Um, There's 14 we, of ooh, us. There's 14 of us. 14 TikTokers, Masonic TikTokers in, in that event. Mm -hmm. And it, it really was a memorable experience. So I definitely encourage you to travel. Uh, yeah. Before we part, I would like to, you know, if if each one of you could give just any uh, any lessons that you learned, anything that you think you want to do more of, that you want to encourage other people to do as well, anything that comes to mind that brothers, when they think about the CAVE degree, they should consider, not just the CAVE degree, but any of these degrees that they should consider. Let's start with uh, Justin. Let me know. Yeah, sure. The, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is when you think about going to see a degree or even just opening and closing a regular meeting of a lodge in a different state, um, you have a preconception to love your ritual because that's the only thing that you've seen. So when you travel within your own district or within your own state, you see your own state's ritual only. 
Um, and so when you go outside of your state and you travel to these different states and see different uh, lodges, how they open, how they do ritual, um, obviously you will have a bias towards your own, but it really opens your eyes to, I didn't consider how they could have worded this differently, or I didn't consider how they could have opened this in a different way, or how many times they say this or whatever they do differently. Um, you have no idea because you've only experienced your own. So this is one of the most uh, wonderful things about traveling to such a big event like this is to see something you never even, it never even came into your mind. It's impossible to even um, uh, conceptualize how other people could possibly do it differently when you've been seeing it the same for so long. So that's one of the coolest things for me personally is just to see um, that it's so normal for us to do it a certain way. And then the culture shock of seeing it completely different. Um, so that's, that's a, awesome. That's a very, very good point. How about you, Rolando? Uh, for me, the overall experience was phenomenal. Um, if it wasn't, I, I did it last year and I had a, a great time. And then this year I was thinking, how can I, how can, how can I, how can I make it any better than last year? And the, the, the answer, <laughs> the answer to that, it was, it was better. The fellowship, the dinners, um, and, and by the way, I know that we mentioned the Grand Lodge of Georgia, but on our way down, we left no uh, stone on turn as well. And we went to uh, Lodge, and help me out with the number here. It's Dalton, Dalton Lodge, Lodge, number 105. 105. Can't forget about those guys either. Yeah. Beautiful people, very hospitable. We even had a little photo shoot. I'm sure Juan can uh, put a couple of pictures up. <laughs> um, but the overall experience was. It was superb. And if you can't make it next year, that's fine. This is not going to stop. But yeah. you have to make a commitment. You have to work it, whether it's the cave degree, the island degree, the waterfall degree, whatever degree. Commit to travel because you're going to find out more about the person that you are and the person that you can be. I love that. Very well said. Patrick. Okay, so I'm going to go a little different route with this because if you're an esoteric Mason, right, if you love the education, if you love the symbolism, if you love the allegory, being able to have conversations with men from other jurisdictions, other states, and see how they explain their working tools. Maybe they have more, maybe they have less, we don't know, but just to have those conversations into how they interpret the ritual right? How they interpret the symbols that we have. Some of it is completely different. In the base, it's all the same, but it's completely different. They can explain it to you in a different way. So having the access to men you would never, ever have access to at any point in your life, most of the time, even online, um, was just one of the greatest benefits that, that, that we had. I think all of us spoke with people we'd never seen heard of DDGMs, grand masters, grand line officers, down to just regular brothers who are on the sidelines, right? And mm -hmm. every one of them had something to offer, mm -hmm. right? It was never dull conversation. So um, I'm, I'm a big guy. I always say ABT, always be traveling. That's one of the greatest benefits that we have. So just if, only if you travel to the lodge next door to you or it closes your jurisdiction that's still traveling you'll still have access to brothers you don't have access to in your lodge it'll open your perspective it'll give you a better understanding understanding of masonry i love it i love it i i echo your sentiments brothers i i am better for traveling i i i feel like i grow i push myself to do better when i see uh ritual exemplified with such dignity with such poise with such nice city i i come home inspired and wanting to do better and making sure that i am putting a great degree for the the newly uh initiated past and race brothers that are going to experience that one time only in their lifetime i you know together the quality of the work that we do uh is a reflection of how seriously we take that stewardship we're we're acquiring something from that we've inherited from men of antiquity and we are the stewards of passing that forward and creating an, a memorable experience 
that is going to help men become better every single day. Brothers, thank you for joining me today. I feel that you guys make me better and I thank you for it. I hope hopefully this is not the, the last time we do uh tertulia like this one. No. Uh, I will share um more details about our trip and the things that we did in the very social media. So brothers, if you don't follow us uh, at the winning stairs, make sure to find us. Um, all of us are putting out content on TikTok, Instagram, wherever, just find us. We're going to have links here in the description of this episode. So make sure to find it. And I wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you to our supporters on Patreon because they are able to get access to early access to episodes, behind the scenes looks at what we do. They get exclusive uh, content and they do so while they're supporting episodes like this. Their support is what makes things like this happen. So if you find that valuable, if you want to be one of those exclusive members of our Patreon supporters, go to patreon.com slash Juan Sepulveda and we really thank you. Another way in which you can help is just put this in the hands of another brother. Hopefully you found some inspiration and you can pass that inspiration on to other brothers. Share it in your Lodge website or in your blog, in your uh, Facebook page, wherever. Just it doesn't cost you anything and it helps us tremendously. So thank you so much for that. And I hope that you come and join us again next time uh, as we continue our journey up the winding stairs. Good evening. <laughs>